and then um, choose prediction, choose outcome. 94% yes, holy cow. We'll run it back. We go again. I don't understand why people don't just read their tweets before they post them. I mean, you can proofread something like 10 times. You could still have like a, you know, like a double word or use the wrong there or something like that. Also, like, I, I think it just flies in the face of what I want Twitter to be, which is just like, I had a stupid thought. For example, you ever see a capital S smart car doing some capital D dumb shit? Don't even do I know we're pausing immediately here. The, the impetus for that tweet, by the way, was there's a lot of construction going on in Vancouver right now, which is fine. I understand it. I, I know everybody complains about it. But there's one section, okay, where a, there's a bridge that terminates into a road. And then there's a merging lane that is a turn on right at where the bridge ends, okay? I'm on the merging lane. Right in front of me is a smart car. As soon as they get to the, like, midway through, not even midway through the merge lane, as soon as they get to the end of the turn, they slam on the brakes in their smart car, turn on their left signal light, and just wait for a spot to open up to get into the bridge lane. Meanwhile, like, you got, there's a zipper merge, okay? You get to the end of the merge lane, and then they let you in, and then the person behind you moves up to the end, and then the car goes, and then they get in in the next... It's called a zipper merge. Instead, they were holding, like, 20 people up behind them, because they're like, I have to... I have to get into this lane right now. That was the... That was the impetus. You ever see a smart car doing some dumb shit? Behind the... VH1 behind the tweet. Imagine if you didn't need a car in general. Oh my god, just shut up. <laughs> like, I get... Look, and this is coming from a position of mutual respect. Anytime anyone... Compl like, if someone's like, Oh, I saw a bad driver today. The proper response is not like, Well, cars shouldn't exist anyway. Like, I get it. You're online, okay? I don't even necessarily disagree, but like, let's talk about where things exist in reality instead of like how they would be if you were Romulus and Remus and we're like building Western society from the ground up in 2022 with all the information you have available from the previous 10,000 years of history, you know? Most people, I guess I shouldn't say most people because again, I don't live in the United States, but they agree with you. They just want you to like be quiet a little bit. They're like, yes, I also am not like a huge fan of cars, but at the same time, I have to go to work. Take the train. Okay, then go ahead and say it. There's no train. Okay. Well, then you should spend the rest of your life petitioning city council uh, to build a train, well, an endless parade of, like, 80-year-old NIMBYs refuse to pay higher property taxes for anything, even though they're grandfathered in at the lowest rate of all time. Why not, dude? Why not? It's like, oh, you drive a car? Oh, why don't you just dedicate, like, every second of your life to, uh, changing the system? It's because Survivor's on, okay? You gotta live a balanced life. That sounds like a you issue. It's not a you issue at all. I just drive my car. <laughs> it sounds like a you issue. You're so mad that I'm driving my car. I'm just trying to pick up my damn kid from daycare. I got no problem. I'm jamming out. I'm, I'm in my car, you know, like, look, was I mad that they were clogging up the merge lane? Yes. But what was I outwardly doing? I was going, singing on the fever street. I want to love a girl like Columbia. I couldn't say it could heaven or Las Vegas. Like, I was, I was zooming, dude. I was having a good time. Plus, don't forget, okay, I'm based. It's a good pill. Okay, you know what? I'll give it a try. 
I don't respect the policy of, of people being grandfathered in. I think it leads to a two-tier system of, of privileges. When we... Uh, I've, I've told this story a few times before. In Ontario, this is not the case. But in British Columbia, landlords can legally make a place not accept pets. In Ontario, they can say no pets. But if you get a pet, they can't evict you because it's like a human rights issue. In BC, they can be like, well, it said no pets, so... You know, are you going to move or are you going to give up your best friend? Which I think is uh, terrible. Anyway, so in we, we lived uh, in an apartment building that was pretty old. And uh, we were told that there were no pets. But there were two old ladies on our floor who had cats. So we asked about it and then our landlord was like, oh, they're grandfathered in. Then Kate wanted a cat, so we got two fucking cats. Because honestly, like, kind of like, fuck you. If other people, oh, the whole building is pet free, except for 25% of the tenants. Okay, well, guess what? Like, I, I guess it's controversial. I believe all people should be treated equally. So we're going to buy a pet then. And then um, when we moved out, the landlord said, by the way, do you guys have cats? There's a lot of pet hair in the apartment. Uh, and then I said, oh yeah, we have two cats. And our landlord said, oh, pets aren't allowed in the unit. And I said, oh no. Well, anyway, and, uh, and we, would, we were already in the process of moving out. And I got I tell this story at least like once every three months because it feels good and I'm proud of myself. That is what we in the business call civil disobedience. We stood up to what I feel is an unjust policy, got a witty little own out of it, and, and faced zero consequences. Did you get your deposit back? We did. Honestly, the only time I've ever lost part of my security deposit was insane. It was when we moved out of our last place into this house. And uh, we had lived in the apartment for like four years, something like that, four and a half years. And uh, first off, when we gave our landlord uh, 60 days notice that we were moving out, she started asking us if we could show the apartment to other people because she was on holiday in China at the time and we were like yeah we're not gonna do like that's honestly you shouldn't even be able to ask that that's an asinine question and then she was like okay okay sorry and so eventually like she started showing the place off when she came back and you know because the rental mar market has always been insane in Vancouver like they got interest in it really quickly she came through to do like her once over um and she was crazy. She opened up the oven and was like, oh, there's like some grease on the bottom of the oven. Would you be willing to clean that for me? And I just told, I was like, you know, we were in the process of moving at the time. I was like, I'm not, that seems to me to be like a reasonable level of, of dirt given the circumstances. So like, I'm not going to do that. And then she said, that's fine. We can just negotiate like taking part of your deposit out. And I was like, okay, fine. So I think at the end of the day, we got like $200 dinged off of our deposit because uh, for an oven cleaning fee. I was like, all right, whatever, whatever makes you feel better. But hey, there's a, there is a catch. I do want to, this is a great synergy here. I was so worried before the walkthrough because uh, in my office, I had put up acoustic foam right but i had put it up with like this insanely sticky like binding tape when i ripped it off it left a ton of foam on the wall it ripped off so much paint and it ripped off so much drywall but i did i i went to the home depot i color matched the paint repainted the wall you gotta give it a try Uh, and it, it looked like shit. It looked like garbage. I was sure that she was going to be like, we're not going to, we're not going to give you your deposit back. She went apeshit on the oven, was like, this is unacceptable. 
charged me 200 bucks for an oven cleaning fee, even though it just looked normal. Um, walked into my office and went, well, it looks good, and then walked out. So I basically considered it like as a, a fair price to pay. Nice. Dude, this, this run is gonna go. Gimpy, Cambian Conception, Candy Heart. Excuse me? Synergy City. Just need some hearts to drop. Need to stop glancing so much. Ooh. Ways to cheat your landlord? I mean, I always try to, like... I'm not as... At least five years ago, I was not as anti-landlord as everybody in chat is now. I was mostly just the guy living my life, okay? But the more I think back, the more I'm like... Almost every landlord I had really did do less than nothing. That's And again, I know this sounds like I'm like a horrible tenant. I swear to you it's not the case. But I'm so old that in the same place we, we lived in where we got cats, because there were people on our floor that had grandfathered into the, the pet policy. Um, we Again, this is due to my own age. We paid rent by sliding a check through a mail slot uh, into an office door at the in the ground level of this building, right? So we'd been living there for like seven months and we'd always paid rent on time. One day I was on the toilet and I got a phone call from my landlord that was like, hey, just so you know, we, we're gonna have to begin eviction proceedings. And I said, um, why? And she said, well, you get, you guys didn't pay rent this month. And I, it was the second of like July. And I was like, oh, I'll just go down and do that right now. And she said, oh, you're planning on paying? And I said, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm not gonna say your name, but I was like, yeah, sorry, I just forgot. And she was like, oh, okay, that's fine. Cause really like, if you do it again, we'll have no choice but to evict you. And I was like, just chill lady. It's good. I forgot for a day. I, I understand that you have to do it, don't get me wrong, but like, things happen, you know? People, people get busy. She was kind of power tripping, for sure. I, and that's why, like, you know, I don't feel too bad about breaking the, breaking the terms of the lease and getting a pet, because honestly, like, She's kind of a scumbag. <laughs> Dude, even like, I don't know, I, I, I respect BC Hydro, like the electrical company in BC. They send you like 60 days before your electric bill is due. They send you um, a, a bill. And then like a week before it's due, they send you a, an email that's like, excuse me, uh, to whom it may concern. This is just a polite reminder. You may have forgotten but your uh, electric bill is due in five days, which is beautiful because there have been times where I get the email and I'm like, I'm going to pay my electric bill and then I just forget. And then I get another email like 40 days later that's like, hey, make sure you're not late on your electric bill. Most sane hydro company in Canada, maybe. And then on the other side, there's my landlord. I was... Uh, eight hours late paying rent, and she was like, hey, to whom it may concern, uh, rather than give you like a courtesy phone call and be like, hey, can you pay your rent this month? I'm gonna engage in eviction proceedings, which just seems like insane to me, because I'm pretty sure legally speaking, once you is issue like an eviction notice, it takes like 60 days to actually get a court order to kick them out of the house or something like that. Like, it's just so overkill for no reason. Anyway. Anyway, she's just a little bit crazy. Old NL used to take pills? Yeah, old NL also used to think food poisoning was not real, okay? Old you used to have, like, uh, 
normal blood pressure and like low density lipid cholesterol, okay? Things change over time. We're all just trying to do our best. A deal with the devil. What floor is this? Caves one? I'll, ch I'll check. I'll check. I'll check. I want to keep my HP high. I honestly, I say no to this. And I say no to this. I, now I'm realizing I have a, uh, I have more, I, I had, re, I, I didn't realize I fell in love with my chains when I was a tenant. Because I had previously said like most of my landlords are pretty good. Um, but now I'm realizing when I first moved to Vancouver, I lived in a, a converted garage, like pseudo basement illegal suite with Kate. And uh, like the month after I moved in, the landlord was like, hey, this was only supposed to be for one unit. So you guys are really racking up the utility costs. I'm going to need to charge you like an extra $100 a month for utilities or something like that. And I was like, I don't think my like one shower a day is uh, is is 300 worth uh, $100 a month. But, you know, you kind of got me in a captive audience here. Also, they had teenage kids. And one time um, I was expecting again because I'm old. I was expecting a hard copy Xbox 360 review game coming in the mail, uh, and it never came. And I was like, that's weird, because they said they sent it out. And then a couple of weeks later, the landlord's wife was like, hey, we found this game in our kid's uh, bookshelf. He said he thought it was for him and he bought it, but actually I'm pretty sure that it's yours. And it was like, one. Of, I don't know if anybody has ever received one of these, but it was not like an EB Games Xbox 360 cover. It was like one of those ones that's like black and white in text on the cover. It was like for review purposes, not for resale, not for resale, not for resale, etc., etc. So, um, you know, just the casual like lying about utility costs and also maybe committing a little bit of mail theft. Gotta respect the kid for the hustle. I mean, honestly, I feel bad for him because I'm pretty sure it was like Resident Evil Revelations. So if anything, like, honestly, we should have just left it there. I want that. I want that Jacob's Ladder. He saved me. And then the place we moved to after that was the one with the insane landlord who threatened to evict us. Um, when I was eight hours late paying the rent completely by accident and had been like a model tenant up to that point. Um, and then the one after that was actually really great, except for the walkthrough at the end and the insane ask to... Uh, to show our apartment to other people like we're a real estate agent like you're already getting paid for doing nothing can you just do the nothing i do have like i, I would say we have like one good landlord the first landlord i had in college we we were seven 19 year olds living in a house on campus we left the house in a state of disarray um, and he gave us all of our deposits back and was on like very friendly terms with us. And I, I really just, I, I look back at that and I'm like, A, he didn't have to do that. But B, sanest landlord on earth, recognized that he was getting paid like an insane amount of money. He was getting paid seven rents for this shitty house. He probably walked in when we moved out and it was a little bit fucked up and he said, what did I expect? And then he paid somebody to come through and clean it and then uh, rented it out to someplace else for like, or to somebody else for like 8% higher. That's, I, I still respect him to this day. I love watching Dan get one hit in phase two. Well, like, I, again, Dan can do whatever he wants in the Melania fight. I saw him make it to phase two today. He So he barely makes it out of phase one, right? 
And then he starts acting because there's like a 50 second cutscene between phase one and phase two. He pulls out a, a pad of paper, starts scribbling on it with a, like a marker, shows what he drew to the chat, takes a huge glug on his insanely large water bottle. He's like completely out of the mindset you need to be in by the time it, uh, by the time the game comes back. Like the, the, the one I was able to watch this morning, he did that during the cutscene. And as a result of doing that, he forgot that he got hit just before the cutscene. And then he got one tapped immediately in phase two. And he was like, how did that happen? And everybody in chat was like, oh, you got hit right before you, you started the fight. I don't, why am, I don't want this, okay? Here's what I want. I want to start picking up these red hearts to get permanent stat gain. I mean, it's a hard fight to begin with. You don't have to, like, you know, make it that much harder on yourself. Anyway, this, this is my story about landlords. I have some semi-positive ones, some semi-negative ones. Some slightly more negative ones. I feel like at least I never had a, a truly insane landlord. I'm thankful for that. My landlord's just a dude. Can't really complain. That's the dream for sure. What would an insane landlord do? I mean, i just be up in your business. Was that an insane damage upgrade? It's a new world. Like, um, not give you 24 hours notice and, and try to come into your unit uh, way more frequently than is actually necessary. Or, I mean, there's... A, at the school that I went to, and, and probably a lot of schools, there are some landlords that put, like, truly insane things in the leases. Like, there's a, an infamous landlord in my hometown uh, that will write things into leases, like, she'll only rent to female tenants. And then in the lease, there will be like some subconditions that are like no male guests, no more than one guest uh, per tenant, no guests uh, at all allowed after like 10 p.m. and stuff like that. So we were actually like when we were in the dorms and we were looking for houses, they did like a workshop on stuff to look out for. And they were like, none of this stuff is actually like legal. But at the same time, like, you should probably just avoid renting with this person. Because, I don't. again, you know, the rules of, of law, the wheels of, of justice move slowly. Is she renting a nunnery? Well, I think that was kind of like her dream. My landlord's daughter once offered me chocolate cake and milk, which was nice, but she never fixes my damn door. Dude, that's what gets me, like, at one of the houses I lived in when I was a student. Like, every time we signed the lease, the landlord would make us uh, a homemade cake and bring it over, and we would, like, all eat a slice together, like some weird, like, funny games sort of torture. But they were so slow when it came to actually fixing anything. We're like, oh, there's some mold in the basement? Like, crickets. As soon as we sign the lease, it's like, here's... She's back with another cake. Shit is crazy, man. It's like Spider-Man 2. Wait a minute, did you Spider-Man 2 me now that I think about it? There's a nice landlord's daughter in Spider-Man 2. I don't know if she brought him a cake, though. I feel like she brings him some sausages. Is that Lauren Lapkus? I'm like, I'm reverse engineering it in my brain right now. No, Lauren Lapkus, she'd be too young to be that age in Spider-Man 2. It's cookies, okay. You guys want some cookies? Put some nuts in it next time. 
Now dig on this. I'm gonna rent my first apartment for university this year, and this is very disheartening. Yeah. I mean, it's just how it is. Like, you know, it's not like during the times where I was renting, like I was miserable every day. It was just like, you know, once every few months you'd have a story where you'd be like, I don't really like the person I'm like renting my house from. It's not all horrible. I will say though, and I, I, again, you're going to accuse me of just farming base. Part of this is because I live in a new place, so I, I don't deal with it as much. But homeowners are like so whiny about how hard it is to own a house. It's so annoying. And I worried that I would like become one of those people when we bought a house, but it's not the case like at all. There's anytime there's an article that's like the rent has gone up 40% year over year, there's always like some 72 year old lady in the comments is like, well, I had to get a new roof this year. And you're like, okay. Like, at least you own your house. I don't know what you want people to say. Like, yeah, everything costs money, Doreen. Most, I, I don't think that the average homeowner real well, I shouldn't say that. I, the Doreens of the world, I feel like uh, they don't realize that, like, if your roof breaks and you're a homeowner, you pay for the roof, and then it's baked into the cost of, like, selling your house in the future. If you're a tenant and your roof breaks, your landlord is going to largely drag their heels for weeks or months before they actually get it fixed. And then they're not going to get it fixed with, like, an accredited roofing agency. There will just be, like, one guy that they've known for 20 years who does all their handiwork. He does all the electrical. He does all the plumbing. He does all the roofing, even though he's not really, like, adept at any of them. He just sort of, like, he's just sort of handy. Like, it's actually, like, so easy to own a house. I have to cut two checks a year for property tax. We're already, like, ten checks down. Well, I mean, I guess the mortgage comes out. Technically, that's a check, but it's more of, like, a direct debit. But I left my item behind. Oh, well. Oh, no, my five homing bombs. Poop my pants. True, true. Your property taxes and baked into your mortgage payment. I didn't know that was a thing. There's multiple people saying it. I didn't know that was a that was a thing. I don't think it's a thing in in Vancouver. This is way too real. Just shut up. You this homeowner spotted. Homeowners are always like trying to steal valor. Oh, my washing machine broke. Okay. Like. The price of your house has gone up 35% in the last 24 months. Like, are people, you, you can't expect people to be sympathetic. It's going down now? Yeah, but as it's going down now, it had gone up so much in the past and rent's going up to begin with. You can, the homeowner, you, you, you can't complain about owning a home in a world of renters, okay? It's just like, uh, it's just a bad look. Turning into Bernie. The homeowners complain too much, it's annoying. I wish they would not complain about... A privilege that they willfully entered into. Especially, like, it bothered me in Vancouver because they were going to raise property taxes on homes valued to be over $3 million in order to, like, um, build more schools, which is something that's in dire need in the city. Obviously, I have a little bias there. I would always ride my bike on the seawall and then like every house in Point Grey, which is like a very wealthy neighborhood in Vancouver, would have this garish, huge, like orange billboard in front of it. It would be like, please stop the communist school tax. 
like we are senior citizens on fixed income uh with that just happened to have a view of the pacific ocean and a house that uh we bought for one hundred and eighty thousand dollars in the 80s that's now worth like five or six million dollars and also uh if you you can go google this and fact check me but vancouver has like the cheapest property taxes in canada or the united states uh on a on a percentage of assessed value basis like it's just you 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 ruined your house with the billboard and i still have no sympathy it would always make me so mad when i when i rode my bike by california's at one percent dude honestly i'm hold on i'm doing my math right now i genuinely think that Vancouver's property tax is point like point three percent of your property's assessed value twice annually. So point six in aggregate. And people still complain nonstop. Delaware's point five eight. I mean, well, we're competing with Delaware, which is where like every tech company moves in order to never pay tax ever again. It's it's point oh five percent biannually. It's crazy, man. Which is awesome for me, but if they were like, you know, hey, we're gonna like raise the property tax a little bit to fund the school, I would be like, you know what, that seems fair. I like, uh, I like living in a city where people are happy and not stressed out. Not as stressed out. Colorado is 7.15%. What the hell? 7.15%. I mean, that is crazy. I used to watch everything this man made. Now I'm not in the loop of watching anything, and that makes me sad. Okay. Well, it seems like you're doing a good job of rectifying that by watching what I'm making right now. So if, if it's genuinely a situation where it makes you sad, you're well on your way to cleaning your own mirror and solving the problem here. You could just leave the, the stream open in another tab. Or not. If you're not interested, you could go watch something else. There's lots of good stuff on YouTube. Tom Scott. Tom Scott's making cool videos. Emma Chamberlain just came back to YouTube. I don't even know who that is, but it was in the trending uh, topic the other day. Dan still fighting Millennia. Yeah, you could be there. You could be there for the I was here moment. Channel 5. Chan Dude, okay, I don't watch a lot of YouTube. But I do love watching Justin watch Channel 5 videos. We got Skeddy. We got beer. We're getting fucking nuts. I had no idea that, that, well, I had no idea about a lot of NASCAR. One thing I did not know is that the current chant du jour is show us your butthole. And I also did not know that Bubba Wallace is uh, absolutely reviled by the NASCAR populace. And, wait, no, n Kyle Bush, Kyle Bush. Everyone was chanting, fuck Kyle Bush. Now, I don't know anybody in the world of NASCAR. I just know their names. Is Are Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, and Dick Trickle still, still racing? Johnson is? He's in IndyCar. IndyCar is like a step down, right? That's, not to be rude. But that's like where you go, like when, when you lose a spot, when you can't hang in NASCAR and or it's a step up. Oh, IndyCar is where you go when you lose your F1 seat, but it's a step up from NASCAR in terms of, uh, I don't know about 
popularity, but prestige? Okay, I didn't know that. That's correct. Because I know that Fernando Alonso went to Indy, right? When he, like, pseudo-retired from the F1 before he came back to F1. Dick Trickle died?! I, just being honest with you, I did not know that. That was not my, um, I was not trying to be glib. Hold on, I would like to lose some hearts here to gain some stats. Well, anyway. I did see someone say, I think you're like three months behind the time on the, on the videos. I have, of course I'm three months behind on the time of my videos, man. I'm, I have a child, okay? I got strong opinions on, like, Peppa Pig. And honestly, I'm pretty stoked because my daughter has started watching a lot of the Magic School Bus. And, you know, it's one of those... It's nice to be able to share with her the things that I watched when I was a child. Magic School Bus is pretty sick, too. I think that th this is too millennial of a bit for me to be happy saying, but they did not have to go that hard on the Magic School Bus theme song. Like, they, they must have hired, like, an ex-soul singer or something like that for that. Cruising off down Main Street, we're relaxed and feeling good. And they got all the ad-libs in the background. Step on in and don't be shy, come on. Just to make your day complete, you might get baked into a pie on the magic school bus. Walk the river of lava. Like, the, it's only like 31 seconds long. But they, they go hard. Also, I didn't realize, like, okay, everybody remembers, if you watched it as a, as a child at least, you remember, that in the first episode, Arnold effing dies. I guess we didn't need to do that. We could have just walked around. Um, but also, in the second episode, they go inside of his body without even asking him. Literally, the first episode, he freezes his head into an ice ball on Pluto. In the second episode, he's just like, he's scared to go on a field trip because he fucking died on the first field trip. So they, Miss Frizzle goes, don't worry, just stay at the school and keep my lizard company, which is an insane thing to say for a teacher in the first place. Then he's just like eating uh, cheese puffs. Miss Frizzle shrinks the magic school bus down to the size of like a single red blood cell and flies into his mouth so that you can uh, learn about how the digestive system works. Like that kid honestly needs to talk to the ACLU. Spoiler tag much? Spoiler tag? You've gotten so much better at singing? Oh, thank you. I've been doing a lot of it, um, you know, to try to get my daughter to fall asleep. Heavily inspired by Charlie Puth's rendition of uh, Sing from Sesame Street. Paid commenter. Someone said that. Don't say no one said that. Someone said that. Mouth said he's a better singer than you. Look, we're Mouth and I are both horrible singers. But I give myself the edge because I know the words. Like I and I've been to karaoke with with this guy a few times. Neither of us have any pitch, but at least I know the words and like when they're said. I want to reiterate, both really, really bad. Like, if we're talking NLSS karaoke, Apollo is an amazing singer. Rob is a very good singer. Me, Dan, and, and Malf are all around the same level, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> Bear, I don't know. I've, I've, I don't think I've ever heard Bear sing, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a good singer. It makes sense to me that Sinvicta would be good at karaoke as well. But, like, Rob is a great singer, and Apollo is a really, really good singer. Like, both of them, they're like the stars of karaoke whenever we went. 
go on. Hello, Chibli. Chibli, I'm, it's not your fault, but I'm mad at you, okay? Because I feel like you're giving America and Americans way too much credit. When you made that tweet that said this is for satirical purposes, but I'm never leaving America again, I'm having the best time. You have to play hard. I understand that you're over there in Oceania. You don't understand the politics of North America. You have to play hardball with Americans sometimes. Because otherwise, they will play hardball with you. Americans will legit be like, Oh, you have to come visit me because I don't have a passport. Okay. Then get a passport. You don't understand. It's so much harder to get a passport in America for some reason that doesn't make any sense. It's the easiest country in the world to travel to and from, but for some reason, it's impossible for me to manifest the idea in my head of what it would be like to possess a document allowing me to freely leave my own country. You gotta play hardball, man. Next time, you have to... Rather than being like, I'm coming back to Texas, you have to be like, you guys come to Wellington, or Auckland, or like Dunedin, or Christchurch, or wherever. I don't know where you live, honestly. Do you live in Hobart, Tasmania? By the way, thank you, Yo A. -A Ron. Thank you. For the gifted subscriptions. To get a passport, I had to drive three hours from LA to San Diego and pay $300 just to get to Vancouver. This is what I mean when I say that Americans are like, you don't understand how hard it is for me. That's probably a little bit worse than the average passport experience, but it is not that atypical, man. Like a, a 10 year passport in Canada is like 160 bucks. The lines are insane right now. There was a viral story about like uh, a woman who she, right now, if you want to go to the passport office to get your passport, you have to line up at like 2 a.m. They stop taking people at like 5 a.m. Um, so instead, she just bought a plane ticket to go to Edmonton. And then there was like an $80 plane ticket, 110 bucks or 160 bucks for her passport and 110 bucks for next day service. See, this is a very similar story to what you're talking about right here. I'm not saying the system is good, just for the record. <laughs> the system is bad. <laughs> no, they have like crazy backups right now. Like normally, when I had to get my passport, I don't know, like renewed, must have been 2013 or something like that. I just had to go to the office and be like, you know, there was not that bad of a lineup. I waited for like an hour and then I was like, I need to renew my passport. And they were like, okay, give me well, they, they always say, do you want a five-year passport or a ten-year passport? And I'm like, hmm, that's a tough one. How about a ten-year uh, passport so I don't have to do this shit immediately? Uh, again, in five years? Anyway, that, that system worked fine for me, but apparently there's like a huge backup now. Probably because people let it lapse over COVID, which makes a lot of sense. Probably because people are traveling more now than they did over the past few years. Do you use Nexus? Uh, I used Nexus until uh, I got ragged on by the border agent because my one-year-old infant didn't have Nexus and I had the audacity to drive into the Nexus line. And he... Uh, Asked if I would feel better if we went inside the secondary, if that would make my day better, and I said no. Anyway, so now we have to take our uh, two-year-old infant to a Nexus interview with a U.S. border agent somewhere, uh, where I guess they're going to interrogate her and make sure she's not stealing a job from a U.S. citizen or something like that. So for now, we just drive through the, uh, the normal side of the border. By the way, um, slash marker. It's Isaac too. I, 